Police find the collie's eagerness to work can be helpful to them in their search for drugs and weapons. We use the dogs, um, for starters, um, they've got a lot better noses than we have. Um, they can cover a, a bigger area, they can search a lot quicker than we can. Um, and, and the main thing is their sense of smell, which is far, far greater than ours. Um, and, um, yeah, because it's not, not just sort of, we don't just search inside houses, we search outside open areas um, and obviously you know you can secrete especially drugs um, small amount of drugs you know 0.2 of a gram the dogs will indicate down to 0.2 of a gram which is a tiny amount um, and you can hide them in the smallest nooks and crannies um, which is very hard for people to find even though we do have a search team that follow us around as well Um, some bobbies had chased a lad uh, who, was, who was known for drugs and he'd chucked some over a fence into an industrial estate. So this was early hours of the morning, about three, four o'clock in the morning. I was called across. Um, we managed to gain entry into this compound and put Bryn out to search and he was searching away. Um, and we were all expecting it to be on the ground somewhere or within some sort of the shrubbery or something like that. Anyway, to my amazement, he actually went and indicated at the bottom of a drain pipe. And um, sort of with knowing the dog so well after, after working with him um, and just his positive indication, I said, it's on the roof, basically, it's on the roof. So obviously we couldn't get up to the roof, so we called the fire brigade out and sure enough, as he chucked it, the drugs were on the roof. It's interesting to note that the police say they would need a team of at least 20 men to do the work of one sniffer dog. And so do those involved in mountain rescue work. Well, the dogs are able to cover a much larger area than just people alone. They use the, the scent on the wind so they can cover a huge area, probably equivalent to about 30 people. Yes, yeah, there's a current of 30 people in a line search, so a dog will cover that area in the same time, if not quicker. Uh, dogs work equally as well at night. They don't need daylight, they use their nose entirely, which people find it very difficult to search at night, obviously because they can't see where things are, but the dog will work just as effectively. Um, training starts off, the whole point of the training is to make it a game, so the, the dog's not actually looking for a person, it's looking for its toy or whatever it gets excited by, a piece of rope, toy, squeaky toy, and it's getting the association with finding the person and get, getting to play with the toy is the important part. So that's how we uh, work the training, that's what, that's what the dogs are motivated by. In the training, um, as I said, we start off in small areas, but gradually we build up to a large area and the dog will have to search that area under the control of its handler and with enough confidence to come back and say there's nobody in that area. So the, the dog will have to work away from the handler using the wind and basically just search a, a defined area. Collies are really suited to this type of work. Their natural sort of abilities are to work a long way away from, say, a farmer when they're herding sheep. They'll cover a huge area of the hill. They're hardy. They work on the hill very well. They don't get bothered by the weather and can work day and night in snow, rain, whatever the weather has to throw at them. Um, we're constantly involved in call-outs. Uh, sometimes you go a month without one and then sometimes there's three in a week, so it really varies. I've been doing this for about 16 years now with the dogs and don't know how many hundreds of call-outs I've been on in that time. Police work and mountain rescue are areas where the collie's intelligence and hard work are highly valued. But only a relatively small number of dogs will find work in these specialised fields. What about the rest? In the domestic field, collies are in demand for obedience and agility tasks. Go to any agility competition and you will find a range of different breeds, but a significant proportion will be collies. Their intelligence enables them to learn the agility tasks quickly. Their compact size, speed and athletic ability makes them both competent and efficient 
at most agility tasks. And the stamina that keeps them going when working sheep all day on a hillside also makes them tireless performers. Collies love to work, and agility tasks seem like a form of work. But not all collies will take to this kind of work. Some can't quite see the point of it. Collies, of course, aren't the only dogs that do these disciplines, that are involved in these disciplines. Um, they're, they're, they're all breeds can be involved in these disciplines. Collies are quite good at it because they, they're so dedicated on pleasing their handler, they'll do anything to please their handler. They'll push, they'll push themselves and push themselves to please their handler. And they may not be enjoying it themselves, but as long as they're pleasing their handler, that's what they want to do. It's part and parcel of, that's what attracts us to the breed, the human beings, to the breed to such an extent. Agility can be a good outlet for the Border Collie as long as your dog actually wants to do it. And if it doesn't? In this country, the majority of dogs are not used for work of any kind, but as pets. What most people expect of a pet dog is that it is placid, uncomplaining, biddable, can take any amount of rough handling, especially from children, and can be left alone to amuse itself without causing damage. Lots of people see that the Border Collie is a wonderful dog, and quite understandably would like to have one for themselves as a pet, without appreciating just what a commitment this involves. Jess, don't be daft. That stick's too big for you. You're only a dog. No, Jess, you're not just a dog. You're a border collie.